Hello everyone and welcome back to my Realism Overhaul with RP1 series in Kerbal Space Program 1.3.1. In this episode we'll begin by launching a mission to series, possibly its backup as well, depending. And then I'm going to try and launch a moon station, and that is under construction right now, and that's to fulfill the lunar station contract. Now, I decided to try and launch the lunar station on a regular 600 ton rocket, the Olympus rocket with a slightly stretched second stage. And uh, originally I had wanted to use a larger rocket, which would have a more convincing amount of Delta V. But to do that, of course, we need a new launch pad, which is currently under, well, it has been under construction. We've gotten up to 350 tons. And of course, I'll have to do another upgrade, six, uh, costing 625,000 to get to 600 tons and then another upgrade costing 1.25 million to boost it after that. So the thing is, I don't really want to spend the money. So uh, I decided to trim down the rocket launching the moon station and uh, just go with an Olympus rocket, you know, so um, we won't be launching the station full of supplies and we'll see how that works out. But yeah, the Larger rocket was going to use F1 engines because I really wanted to use F1 engines. And I wanted to stop using the silly cluster of balloon tanks that we've been using on the Olympus and instead use nicer looking stages. But it's also expensive and it needs the larger launch pad, which will make the rollout costs more expensive. So we're going to go with the silly cluster of balloon tanks. <laughs> so uh, what can I say? Uh, anyway, but uh, that'll be finished with construction in 51 days. and. Even as it is, the rollout cost is going to be like 300000 for that, so very expensive. But anyway, uh, for now, we, we are not doing that. We're going to be doing our series probe, and that can be launched on a smaller launch pad. Okay, I had indicated the 150-ton pad, but we actually need the 350-ton pad for this one. And here we go, throttle up, SAS is on, and... Ignition. And launch. The 150 ton pad is good enough for Mars and Venus probes, but not for this probe. Okay, well past the speed of sound. Going through max Q. Okay, some really serious G forces here. But of course, no crew, so no problem. And we're getting ready for set. Main engine cutout and separation and ignition. Okay, the upper stage has lit. We've still got a residual roll because I wasn't controlling roll with Smart ASS. So there's just this little gentle roll left over. And fairing set. Okay, we do have enough for orbit, as expected. We'll probably make orbit with a little bit of Delta V to spare, but not enough to make me unhappy that we don't have an extra ignition on this en engine right now, so it'll just be a little bit. Okay, we are making orbit here and shut down 213 by 170 and well, it's 492 meters per second left, but it's fine. Alright, let's separate that off now and RCS this a bit. And then we will attempt to transfer to Ceres. But of course, Ceres is a really tiny target. So we'll see how well we can do that. All right, so the planned maneuver is 5,649.6 meters per second. And it'll take about two years to get there, 752 days. And our contract is up, the Ceres flyby contract. Is up in 949 days so we'll get there on time but we're not gonna have a second shot at this if you notice uh, it's going pretty far out to hit it and that's because there's still going to be some relative inclination between us and Ceres no matter what because Ceres has that 12 degree inclination with Earth so 
And that is the best possibility, I think, right now. And ignition. We do have enough fuel. Of course, this probe was configured for Jupiter. So, series should be easier, in theory. Okay, final phase of the burn. Okay, let's see what we got. Well, we didn't get what we wanted. Uh, let's go a little bit retrograde and see if we can adjust that. I think we overburned a bit. Oh, okay, well, there we lost it. Okay, so we're going to need to do some sort of radial thing that I will have to plot, but we should be able to do it on the RCS fuel on this stage before we dump it. And of course we could reignite this stage if it really requires a substantial amount of delta V, but I don't think it will. But anyway, plotting time. Okay, I've got a good enough correction with 22.6 meters per second. It'll get us to a thousand kilometers or so. But it is going to be a bit touchy. And if it seems like this is working out, we'll uh, reserve the backup series probe for Vesta. Uh, we've got uh, Vesta opportunity in 203 days. And again, once we're done with this stage, it's just a uh, 2 kilonewton thruster there. So I'm not anticipating any problems. I'll see if I can do the burn with uh, just the RCS. Probably I'm not going to relight this. I'll just move on to the next stage if there's any... Yeah, the RCS should handle it. Okay, let's see. Did we get... Well, got an encounter. Oh, wow, wow. Okay, okay, stop. <laughs> All right, that's good enough. Uh, hopefully it won't wobble around too much. Um... Power should be fine over here, and I'm not going to decouple right now, but it's wobbling all over the place, but I don't want to turn on the RCS right now or or do anything to mess up our orbit. That's good enough for recharging. We'll decouple once we get closer to the target, since, you know, that's pretty good right now as far as approaches go. Um, I'll leave myself some time before we actually get there. So I won't do the SOI alarm or a maneuver node inside there. Because at Apoapsis, let's say, let's check if we can get a little bit closer. So I'll add that alarm, and we'll check on this probe at that time. But otherwise, everything looks fine. There's no new science here, is there? This is just above. Maybe if we do high over the Earth, we'll get something new. Why don't we just go ahead and time warp to that? The next thing we need to do is check on our Venus probe and then we'll be clear to launch our moon station. Or at least attempt to. Okay, science. Visible imaging, telemetry, temperature scan, pressure scan, orb orbital perturbation, cosmic ray science is useless, magnetic scan, no. Magnetic scan 2 is good. And so is the higher level mass spectrometry. But technically, uh, it shouldn't have been able to do the magnetometer thing because we didn't extend that boom because extending that boom would cause it to hit this tank. But let's not tell anyone. All right, so this is all set. And let's get on with the Venus probe uh, maneuver. Uh, I just turned to our Venus probe and... It exploded due to G-forces. Apparently 20,441 Gs. I will try to Alt F4 and come back in and see if it's okay. Okay, well last time I tried to jump to the Venus probe by using the jump to ship feature in Kerbal Alarm Clock uh, and then it exploded. But the bright side is that Kerbal Alarm Clock saves a uh, quick save before it does that and I restored that. So we have the Venus probe back, and this time I'm just going to try clicking fly here and see what happens. If it still explodes, I might have to enable a cheat or something. But hopefully it was just a jump to ship thing, there was maybe some glitch involved, I don't know. We'll see. Well, we have Delta V. Okay, alright, alright, all right, hold on, hold on. 
don't be puffing your thrusters just yet. So anyway, this is going to be a Venus atmospheric probe, and it looks like it is intact. I'll get rid of that alarm, and let's do it. Hopefully we can fulfill that contract. So again, we need to transmit science under 110 kilometers and safely land with the lander part, but there's an orbiter part too. And communication seems fine too. Let me make sure, yeah, those are activated as well. So everything is activated properly. On decoupling, I'll want to activate these. Hopefully those thrusters are placed in a good position. Um, we do have science to do. Good. Transmit. Lots of science. Okay, and burn. I think 381 is a good start. Let's check our lines of communication here. So we're communicating down this way. Let me set that to 12 o'clock. And we're coming around. It would seem like we would be in communication at periapsis there. And it's daylight at periapsis, so good overall. Um, possibly once we get just a little bit beyond periapsis, we're going to lose communication. It's definitely not going to take this entire stage to make orbit. So maybe we should start that off a little bit earlier so that we can definitely have communication. And also make sure we're not dipping into the atmosphere there. That ought to be good enough and the atmosphere starts at 145 kilometers. And after we get into that orbit, well, I mean, we would like to be polar, but right now we're probably not going to fix that. We'll take what we can get because that's not part of the contract right now. Okay, we're in space just above. Let's do some science. Uh, okay, well, we accumulated some there, but I don't know if all that science actually got scienced properly. Well, this burn is going to take a fairly long time, so let's turn now. And we are burning. As long as we get part of the burn done, we should be fine for orbit. It's just we won't be in as tight an orbit. I'm mainly on the map view to keep an eye on our communication. Okay, we're pretty close to losing communication, so I want to shut down before that. Let's quickly try and do some more science, maybe? Only stuff that's surface biome sensitive will be new. Right, well, now we have to dip that probe into the atmosphere, and we'll use the, the orbiter to do that even though it does have little thrusters that should be able to handle it. We'll get out to Apoapsis, dip down, deploy the lander, and go back up again. Obviously at Periapsis it seems like we lose connection, which means that we actually want it to dip into the atmosphere a little bit sooner. Hmm. But then again, the orbiters can provide some communication support, so maybe it's not too bad. Minor burn down to, let's say, 80 kilometers? Uh, that might be too much. Maybe not. I mean, it probably doesn't matter since we've already captured and we're slower. Whoa, that's hefty. Um, actually, why don't you go prograde a bit? <laughs> that was a bit more than I thought it would be. Actually, everything would be backwards, wouldn't it? Well, it seems like these thrusters work fine. 
I mean, it feels a little bit imbalanced. Well, they're not placed perfectly, let's face it. Okay, I need to quickly get back to the orbiter, otherwise it'll be out of render range. Okay, prograde, please. It's pretty close to being okay after decoupling that. This thing had way too much decoupling force. Hey, let's extend this magnetometer boom now, finally. I don't think there's anything else we need to extend. And the higher up we put this, the better off it'll be for helping with communication. Let's see, the range of these, 2,000 kilometers. So why don't we just put it at 2,000 kilometers, or nearly that. That's good enough. Okay, we are following this little probe in. Oh, the periapsis went up again. Gosh darn it. Occurs to me that the orbiter doesn't have a whole lot of RC, uh, sorry, electric charge. Oh, we are out of render range now. Okay, well, we'll have to just hope that that is good enough. Certainly should have solar panels that can recharge it when it gets to the daylight side, where we are trying to land. So we can see the communication right now. This is the lander probe, there's the orbiter. The orbiter should still ha be above the horizon and communicating with Earth as we land, the way it is right now. We've got this one passing by. I don't think that'll help. And then there's this one as well. But I don't know if they have Omni antennae. Looking okay so far, we'll be slowing down, so the orbiter will, orbiter will catch up with us. Still, we're coming in at 8,800 meters per second here. We'll see whether my decision to have less than full ablator was a good one. Okay, here we go. Ooh, something is blowing up! Something is blowing up! No! Don't blow up! 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 <laughs> Little thing. Whatever you are. I think it's a tank. Yeah, I think it's the fuel tank. Maybe it's too close to the heat shield. Serious G-forces. Not much of later usage at all. heat shield colliders, I swear. Okay, the tank is safe, it looks like. Okay, wow, how high did G-forces go there? Once it stops shaking the camera, I'll check. Okay, I'll check now. 19.3 uh, Gs, it says. Seemed more, but okay. All right, well, we are below 110 kilometers, right? Yeah, let's transmit some science. Fill a contract. Wow, 63 for the cosmic ray science. Well, let's verify that the contract is filled with that. We have time. It's gonna take a while to get to the surface and everything. Yes, that is successful. We will continue to transmit. Oh, it doesn't have that many instruments after all, yeah. Not a huge backlog. Okay, so on to the surface. Let's turn off Smart ASS. I think you'll be all right. All right, um, I'll come back to you when the parachutes deploy. <laughs> it's gonna be a long trip down. Okay, well, it's taken so long for this thing to get to the surface, even with the physical time warp that uh, our satellite, our orbiter, has passed by already. So we... Well, I mean, it's still sort of overhead, but not quite. And it's, of course, uh, lost communication with Earth, or... I think so. Yeah, I think that line is going through Venus. So we're gonna have to wait until it orbits around again before we get communication back. Hopefully the parachutes work, but yeah. Uh, just a long descent is sure gonna 
take a bite out of what I can get done in this episode. Hopefully, well, it depends on how the space station launch goes. That's definitely the next thing. Uh-oh, we have another problem. These antennae are overheating. That's not good. How the... what? <laughs> They're not supposed to overheat? We still got 15 kilometers to go and they're overheating. Hmm. Well, I mean, the probe core has its own internal comms. Wherever... well, it's tumbling all over the place. So, I mean, let me see how much distance... 200 kilometers. Well, maybe... Maybe without these two, we'll still have enough range, but... It'll be tough. Okay, we're getting burning sound now from the two antennae, and actually the bottom tank is sorta... Of, sorta of overheating too. It's doing sort of a barbecue roll, but it doesn't matter because the heat is coming from the ambient temperature and not, um, not particularly specific to the sun's direction. We're five kilometers above the surface, but parachute deployment is just going to slow us down. I wonder why this parachute shows that it's not... Okay, whoa! Well, something exploded. Well, it's one of the antennae. And both of the antennae have exploded. Um, we do have to transmit signs from the surface and not just land. And now we are relying on that core. I mean, the early controllable core right there. Um, it's possible to dip the the orbiter lower to try and get a connection if it turns out that it's too high. It is currently at 1,200 kilometers and this is only as an omni range oops, only an omni range of 200 kilometers. Oh, both parachutes were destroyed due to aero forces and heat. I think it was mostly the heat, actually. Um, probably the... Uh, I guess it's too hot for parachutes. Let's see. So, if you're visiting... Um, oh, it doesn't actually have any data on it here about the parachutes. But if you're visiting uh, Venus, you're gonna have to have parachutes that... can do what exactly? I don't know. I, I guess maybe a different material... I don't know if a different material would have withstood it better. Silk or nylon... I mean, probably I was using nylon. I don't know if one of the other materials would have done any better. Okay, well... It's even trying to take away the parachute cases now. But here we are, 200 meters above the ground. Coming in somewhere between 6 and 12 meters per second really depends on exactly how we hit the ground. Uh, oh, oh, don't flip again. Oh, that's the worst. Oh, we bounced. Okay, well, that, that'll do. Okay, we are here. And we are Phys uh, n doing non-physical time warp, that's good. And we have to wait until... I mean, electric charge is not diminishing very much, so we've got time with this probe. We have to wait until that comes around, but I think it's probably going to be too high. I think we should visit it and bring its orbit down. So I'm going to go over there. Okay, that seems to be getting us some charge again. Hopefully we'll get quite a bit more before we lose the sunlight. This core should also not be consuming too much power. Well, should I use all the fuel? I think 300 kilometers is good enough, right? It combines, but... Okay, that's 200 something. <laughs> Let's leave it there, and um, if we time warp, it's recharging, you'll lose the sunlight, but then gain it back by the time it's over the landing site, so that's legit. <laughs> I'll, I'll declare it legit, it's fine. Okay, back to the probe on the surface. 
Okay, moment of truth, whether this satellite is going to be picked up or not with the probe core. Otherwise, we'll have to wait for Venus to rotate, and its rotation period is really, really slow. And technically, we would probably run out of power by then. Okay, we've picked it up. All right, just in time, transmit cosmic ray science. And we've got the Venus landing contract. All right. Transmitting the rest of the science. And I think we have a success. We got the monies and we got the sciences. 1,320 now. We've got a stockpile of it. All right. Well, good times. Back to Space Center. Okay, so here is our space station launch for the moon, and it doesn't have a whole lot of margin. We've got locked fuel on the payload that is supposed to help us make orbit, so that's not all being read down here. Basically, this is what it looks like. We've got, uh, I, I thought it was supposed to be 9,000 with these two combined, and then we have to use some of this fuel to finish orbit and then transfer to moon some fuel from the station to uh, finish the transfer to the moon and then we'll have the locked fuel to make orbit around the moon. We are not full up on food, water, and oxygen here, so it's all pretty tight in order to fit it on a 600-ton launcher. All right, well, here we go. The ignition. And launch. Oh no, oh no, oh no, oh no, oh no, 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 I didn't mean it, I didn't mean it. Um, <laughs> oh boy. Whew. I accidentally pressed the surface negative velocity instead of the surface surface one. And that led to a bad tilt. Hopefully we didn't lose too much delta V there. Okay, looks like we somehow made it through the first stage. And separation. And ignition. Uh-oh. The J2 started, but we've got... We've got oscillations. We've got oscillations. This is not good. Uh... Let me... Oh, no, it's not going to work. Oh, God. Well, I didn't see that coming. I, 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 of course, increased the size of those tanks. And I guess I didn't realize that increasing the size of those tanks went beyond a certain clippy limit, I suppose, of some kind. And that has led this little uh, probe core, I think. It's a probe core, yeah. Uh, avionics score to uh, reach uh, 41,000 meters per second. And very much on escape. I think this probably does it for me this episode. I'll have to see about... Uh, yeah, we're gonna have to... At least we got some money in science. Maybe I should... Maybe I should upgrade the pad after all and just go with a larger launcher instead of risking this sort of thing again. I mean, I suppose if I tweak the tanks just the right way, they'll... They'll be all right, but where is this going anyway? It's definitely on escape. Uh, uh, that, oh, that's the line. It's going to uh, go that a ways. Right through. It's definitely going to escape the solar system. And in 903 days or so. Okay. Yeah. So <laughs> I've had enough. <laughs> I've had enough. Um, we will just leave it here. So thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did enjoy this video, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below, and I'll see you next time.